currently this speaker is not around so therefore my core mc is going to be doing the presenting on his behalf so please you're welcome and good afternoon to you all um, as I said before, my name is Malik Ndoy. I'm also a student like you, a 60-year medical student. Um, so as mentioned by the co-MC that um, Mr. Um, Kesane is absent uh, due to the busy schedule, I will be reading his um, speech out so that it will not be a plagiarism on my side and lecturers are here, they can cut me for that. Um, so good afternoon. Um, future healthcare professionals. Today, um, let's, let us uh, critically delve into the concept of um, hospital uh, as a home. So that's the um, topic that he is supposed to speak on. Um, he continues as boarding student, so uh, as boarding um, nurses, you will uh, play a pivotal role in transforming uh, clinical settings into a warm and comfortable environment for patients that could mimic their individual homes. Um, dear fellow students, I am thus honored to address you as dedicated future nurses. Our journey in nursing isn't just about mastering medical or nursing management and procedures and implementing them on patients but it's about embracing a holistic approach that put emphasis on our roles as patient advocates in which the patients are treated not just as cases but as individuals with unique needs and emotions um mr bach was talking about the issue of stress so at times as you know health workers or as students when we approach patients uh, we just want to, you know, give the treatment, okay? But we at times forget about the psychological um, environment of the patient. So it's important that we at times approach the patients in a very good way. And Mr. Bach has uh, dealt with that very um, nicely. Therefore, let us reflect on the concept of hospital as a home uh, for patients and also for um, healthcare workers. The phrase hospital as a home for patients um, encapsulates a fundamental shift in how we perceive healthcare settings. It's a paradigm that emphasizes creating an environment where patients feel safe, cared for, and also um, valued, as uh, Honorable has um, delved into that very much. This concept is rooted in, in empathy, um, respect, and the understanding that healing extends beyond medical and nursing um, procedures. As nurses, we are often the bridge between clinical protocols and compassionate care. We have the power to turn hospital rooms into a space filled with warmth and understanding. How do we achieve this? Firstly, it begins with seeing each patient as a unique individual which means individualizing um, care approaches. Um, in this section, um, new developments are taking place on how we approach patients. Okay, For example, two patients may have malaria, but their approaches might be different, even though they have similarities in uh, medication, medications. So I believe you understand that. Therefore, every person who walks through our hospital doors brings with them a life story, fears, hopes, and dreams, taking our time to listen to them, to understand their concerns, and to involve them in decision making can make a big difference in our healthcare delivery. Secondly, it's about creating a supportive and inclusive environment. Patients should feel like active participants in their healthcare journey and not just as passive recipients of care simple acts of kindness such as addressing them by name explaining procedures in plain languages that they can understand or offering them a tender and comforting touch 
can humanize their clinical experience and maximize their satisfaction. Thirdly, fostering a sense of being at home or community within the hospital can greatly contribute to the hospital as a home concept. This means building strong relationships, not only with patients, but also with their healthcare professionals, support staffs, volunteers, and I will add the escorts also. Very important. Collaboration and open communication are key to creating a cohesive care environment for our patients. Moreover, we must never underestimate the impact of the physical environment on patients' well-being. A clean, well-maintained and aesthetically pleasing space can promote healing and a sense of comfort. Paying attention to small details like lighting, decorations and minimum noise levels can make a significant difference in how patients perceive their uh, stay. Um, Mr. Bao was talking about the issue of stress. Um, when people or when patients are stressed, it is going to be very difficult for us to give them treatments. It's difficult, honestly. Some patients, they will refuse treatment. And when we know in ethics, when patients refuse treatment, you don't force them. Otherwise, the, we are the graduates from the law school will, uh, will, de will deal with you. May Allah protect us from that. So lastly, let's not forget the importance of self-care. Uh, self As nurses, we must take care of ourselves to be able to provide the best care to others. Finding moments of respite, seeking support when needed, and nurturing our own well-being are integral parts of creating a positive healthcare environment. In conclusion to this part, the concept of hospital as a home is not just a slogan. It's a mindset, a commitment to providing patient-centered care that prioritizes empathy, dignity, and healing. Um, this word empathy is something which I believe every student, whether the person is a nursing or a medical student or any other student, but you are a healthcare worker, you try as much as possible, you inculcate this into your ethics. It's very important. If you empathize with patients, you have seen a patient in the ward, for example, the patient is undergoing stress. Do not say that these patients, they are just like this, they like complaining, they are not cooperative. No. You don't know what the patient is what complaining of. How about if you are in the same problem and somebody approaches you in that like manner? Will you like it? No, I will not like it personally. I won't. So it's important that we take care of that. As we embark on our nursing careers, let's carry this ethos with us, knowing that our actions, no matter how small, can make a world of difference in someone's um, life. I look forward to seeing each of you embodying the spirit of hospital as a home in your practice. Now let's explore the concept of hospital as a home for knowledge in the context of nursing education. They are aspiring nurses. As students entering the noble profession of nursing, we are not just entering a career but a lifelong journey of learning and growth within the healthcare system. Hospitals are not merely places for treatment, where you just come and treat patients and go home. No. They are rich repositories of knowledge and experience. Each ward, each patient interaction, and each clinical scenario present invaluable opportunities for us to deepen our understanding and refine our consolidate and refine and also consolidate our skills. First and foremost, hospitals provide a hands-on learning environment like no other. Here, we the privilege we are, we have the privilege of working alongside experienced healthcare professionals who serve as mentors. You know, guiding us through real-world challenges 
and imparting practical wisdom that cannot be found in textbooks alone. You know, we have what we call bookworms. I used to hear that in juniors, uh, uh, senior school a lot, bookworms. Um, per se, this being of bookworms doesn't seem to work too much when it comes to tertiary institutions. You've got to read and you have to be what? Very practical. So you've got to see the hospital as a home. But if you read, for example, you read about cannulation in your room and you don't go to the hospital for seniors, and mentors to teach you on how to um, do cannulation. When you go there, if you see a cannula the first time, and they ask you, sir, can you cannulate this patient? You will be there and your hand will be what? Shaking, okay? So you've got to be in the hospital to experience it, for you to be taught. Sometimes there are tips that you need. You will not find those things in the books. Honestly, I don't, personally, I, um, before I couldn't do cannulation, I was taught by the nurses, by the way. Okay, so clap for yourself for that. So actually, nurses they teach me a lot. You know, they teach me a lot. I, I think I, I owe them something. Inshallah, I will pay back maybe in the future. However, you got to be in the hospital in order to learn how to do some of those procedures. But if you just read the books, you are just a textbook student. You know, when you go to the hospital, you will think that what you read in the book and what you find in the hospital is like, you know, how do you call it? Between heaven and earth. Okay? So it's quite different. So you've got to be there for them to show you, okay, this is the theory and this is the practical. Sometimes what you read as theory may not be applicable to your setting. So you've got to be closer to people that have experience in the field for them to teach you. And the tips are very important. So be close to the senior nurses. So it's important. Um, just to move on, moreover, hospitals are hubs of innovation and research. They are at the forefront of medical advancements, constantly pushing the boundaries of what is possible in healthcare. As nursing students, we have the chance to witness and even contribute to groundbreaking discoveries that shape the future of um, patient care. In addition to clinical knowledge, hospitals offer a wealth of interdisciplinary learning opportunities. We interact with colleagues from various specialties, learning from their expertise and gaining insights into collaborative um, healthcare practices. This interprofessional education prepares us for the holistic, team based approach that is essential in today's modern healthcare um, delivery. Furthermore, hospitals serve as classrooms without borders. Classrooms without borders. We encounter a diverse range of patient population, each with unique needs cultural backgrounds and health um, challenges. This exposure cultivates cultural competence, empathy, and a deep appreciation for the delivery within um, our communities. This is a vital aspect of providing a patient-centered care. As I was saying, um, two patients may be diagnosed with malaria, but the approaches might be different. Maybe this other patient has cerebral um, malaria. This patient doesn't have cerebral malaria. So the approaches will be different. And sometimes the other patient might be a bit stable than the other patient. So we should know how to approach these two types of um, patients. Let, let us also acknowledge the pivotal role of technology in shaping hospitals as dynamic learning environments. If electronic health records and simulation labs were present and unfortunately not as we speak, we could have access to multiple tools and resources that could enhance our learning experiences and equip us with the digital competencies needed in today's healthcare landscape. This paragraph, I believe we should all think about it. 
in as much as we want to save patients life but the healthcare system in the world has advanced in such a way that when you number it let's say from one to ten we may be maybe one or two or three we are really behind definitely behind in terms of science and technology we are definitely behind but alhamdulillah we are now having you know some x-ray ct scans mris etc in fact those ones may not actually be in the government institutions they are probably in the um, uh, private sectors so let us strive as much as possible and here i might put on the shoes of honorable to give back to the community when we grow up inshallah and i hope honorable that's right <laughs> thank you so much um as we embrace the concept of hospital as a home for knowledge let us approach each day with curiosity humility and faith for learning let us seek out opportunities to expand our knowledge refine our skills and contribute meaningfully to the improvement of patient outcomes and the advancement of healthcare as a whole um, when students go to the world many a times especially as we say Fendija, there is nothing here we are Muddara, you know and you will be there and you know the, the senior nurses are not you know monitoring you then you find your way out you go home we all did it, or we all do it not so but anyway um you don't just have to be um observed or monitored by senior nurses or the nurses in charge or the doctors on call no you know but you have to monitor yourself you have to be someone who is very curious as i told you most of the things that i learn and i'm benefiting my community with it is from the nurses if i say oh well, you know medical students and nurses are i won't be able to learn anything absolutely nothing because most of the time yes we have opportunities to go to the wards but things like cannulation uh, catheterization sample collections and other procedures basic procedures if you don't get closer to the nurse you will not be taught you will not be taught and then when exams comes and then the consultants ask you sir uh, please fix a cannula or fix a catheter for this patient and you are there sir we don't we don't do that you don't have you don't even tell the consultants those kind of things during exams they give you what video failure you know <laughs> and it's very stressful during exams very stressful so let us inculcate those things into our system so remember nursing is not just a profession it's a call a call to a lifelong learning comparison and excellence in patient care let us honor this call by making hospital hospitals not just as places um, of treatment but through homes for knowledge and growth um, some people some healthcare professionals imagine when you give a very proper care to a patient and the patient is happy with you what happens they pray for you the patients they pray for you they become happy and most of the time when your patients become happy you also feel a sense of happiness in you is that not enough of course it is enough so i think uh, we should inculcate those things into our system too so anyway thank you and i am excited to witness the ink uh, the incredible contributions each of you will make to the field of nursing and i hope this speech resonates um well with your audiences that is mr um, babukar of nursing students and inspires them to view hospitals as dynamic learning environments that foster continuous growth and development um i'm sorry that this speech is well prolonged but i hope that you will get some benefits from it uh, on that note i thank you all for your attention so mr abdul karim fofana is a registered nurse he has also have masters in nursing he have had 16 years healthcare experience currently He's a lecturer in the School of Nursing and Midwifery, Gambia College, and also 
the treasurer of the National Association of the Gambian Nurses and Midwife Council. So, Mr. Fofana, you're welcome on stage. Thank you. Um, I want to recognize the presence of our Honorable MP, Mr. Bakari K. Bani, and the uh, respected um, guest invited, the MC. Uh, Mr. Ture is not yet around. Uh, my colleagues are the students of the School of Nursing, and then the parents of Mr. Uh, Babokan Rubali, and all the uh, well wishers. Thank you all. Um, I don't know whether I am the happiest person or Abu Bakar, uh, Babu Kar is the happiest person. Um, because I am the class tutor where Babu Kar is currently studying. Um, if you talk about Babu Kar Kurubali, uh, you must talk about April 2020 intake. Um, this is the class where he is currently in. And these are rare opportunities, are rare occasions where we have a student to write a book. Um, when you talk about April 2018, you must also talk about the School of Nursing. And uh, if you talk about the School of Nursing, you must remember who is also the head of school, that's Mrs. Bach. Okay, um, Mrs. Ba is not present here due to some um, busy schedules. She was attending a meeting as she could not come. But uh, on behalf of all the lecturers and all the support staff, um, we are all proud of Abu Bakr, Abu Bakr Purbali. We are already we are all delighted and then happy and we appreciate his efforts. Um, I am asked to talk about attitude. At your attitude as nursing students matters. This is very important. Um, as you are all aware, your course is divided into two sections. One is academic, and that is the skills that you are required to have. Okay? If you come, you need the skills to be able to do certain procedures that you are expected to do when you are the clinicals. But also, you need the attitude also to be able to help your patients. And this is why um, during your graduations at the college, it is always mentioned that you are qualified both academically and also by attitude. Your attitude also is considered. Um, just to go back to the Honorable uh, MP, what he, what he uh, mentioned here, the story that he mentioned, where the nurse was not prepared, did not want to, or did not attend to him. That was not an issue of academic. It is not that because the nurse could not prescribe for him, okay? The nurse doesn't know how to prescribe for him. That was not the issue. But the problem was the attitude, okay? If the nurse should have um, displayed a good attitude, would have been like if um, he made them eating, the nurses, they should stop the eating, in fact, and attend to him. So when he is cared for, when he left, then they can go back and eat. Okay, so that's an issue of attitude. So that is why your attitude is very, very important as a nurse. And then um, as lecturers and also um, um, educationists, it is believed that the attitude that you cultivate when you are a student, okay, will manifest when you become a staff nurse. The attitude that you have when you are a student will always, okay, be presented when you become a staff nurse. That is why we... Academic um, um, education is try to ensure that the students have a good attitude. If you have a good attitude when you are a student, if you graduate, most likely you will have that good attitude. But any student who is having a bad attitude and the attitude is not changed, if the person graduate at the time of graduation, after graduation, that individual will also have the same, almost or similarly will have a similar bad attitude when the person practices. 
Um, there are a lot of uh, medical legal cases that you know the nursing and midwifery, midwifery, midwifery council taking the, the nursing and midwifery council the cases that they're taking care of. Okay, most of them are related to attitude worldwide, not only the Gambia alone. Hardly for you to see a nurse being taken to court or a nurse is suspended because of academic issue or skill wise. Maybe the person is not skillful. No. Most of the cases where nurses have problems is related to attitude. And that is not only the Gambia. Just go and search and see where nurses have cases where nurses have been taken to court. Some have gone to jail. Okay. If you search it, you will see that most of them is related to the attitude. The attitude that you have is very, very important. And one of the attitudes that uh, Honorable Manson here, trying to treat everyone equally. And this is one of the nursing ethics called justice. Fairness. You have to be fair to everyone, regardless of the person's um, um, socio-economic, socio-cultural background or economic background. You have to be fair to everyone. So, such type of attitude, if you have it, you will be able to take care of everyone without considering whether they will be able to do something for you or not. The attitude of respect, which um, the author has mentioned in his book, okay? Dignity, giving respect to everyone that you're caring for. Um, you know, taking care of patients, it is not only giving medications, you know, setting cannulas and doing other procedures, but also they are psychological, what, like what of my, one of my colleague Mr. Bar, what he said, the psychological part also is important. Okay? The person needs to be dignified, the person needs to feel that he's respected. He needs to be comfortable in order for the treatment to be successful. Okay? Treatment has to do with some psychology. And that is why some patients, you know, if they go to certain facilities, they always want to ask for someone else. Somebody. Okay? If the person that they want to see if that person prescribes for them, usually they will feel okay. Okay? But otherwise, if they are seen by some other people with the same drugs, okay, they don't feel fine. Okay? So that is why your attitude as a nurse is very, very important. Very, very important. And then the attitude of, um, you have to have an attitude of um, um, uh, lifelong learning. Okay? As a nurse, it is not like I'm a student nurse, you know, especially when you finish, if you think that learning has finished, no. You have to keep learning because things are changing. We are in a world that nursing is evolving. So your attitude of learning on a daily basis is very important. And this is not only learning through the book, but if you go to the clinicals, the people that you interact with, your colleagues, you should be able to learn from them. Okay? So that all the mistakes that have been done by your colleagues, you will not repeat the same mistakes. This is done through learning. Okay? And the attitude of collaboration is also very, very important. Because we have a profession where one person cannot take care of a case, of, of a problem of a patient. You have to collaborate. So if you don't collaborate with your colleagues, most of the time your treatment or your, the care that you are rendering would not be successful. Okay? And the issue of communication also comes in. You have to have an attitude of good communication. Because most of the problems that we have in the healthcare settings, it is related to not communicating properly. Okay? Not communicating properly. This attitude of people staying away from work without communicating. You will go to a ward, the people who are supposed to be there, somebody will be absent. And the person will not even communicate. Okay? And if that is done now, you're creating a problem because the care that's supposed to be rendered to those patients would be minimized, okay? Would be harmed. So the attitude, in short, for nurses is very, very important, okay? Nurses are praised most of the time that the attitude they have. In the olden days, okay, the knowledge of nursing has not advanced like the way it is today. Nursing has evolved now. Okay? A lot of research has been done on procedures, right? on how to care for patients. Things have developed. But the attitude that was there before was somehow better than the attitude that we have today. Okay? Nursing has been considered as a noble profession. Throughout the world, people are respected because they are nurses. And the reason why they are respected 
it is mostly because of the attitude, the good attitude that they have, the caring attitude that they have, okay, the honesty that they have, okay, confidentiality that they have, right, respect for others, right, and they are also having the attitude being trying to adapt to situations, like what some colleagues said here. If you are posted as a nurse, there are different settings. It's very important for you to have the attitude of moving, trying to adapt yourself to that situation, so that you are there. And this is why, during the course of the training, we usually um, have nurses been taken to the community, what we call community experience. All this is geared towards so that your attitude is somehow shaped in such a way that you should be, and you should be able to adapt to different settings. So this is very, very important. And the last point that I want to talk about, uh, that I want to talk about is um, empathy, which has been mentioned here. It's very, very important because you'll be dealing with patients, people who have issues, okay? People who have issues. So you also have to show concern, okay? You have to be caring for those people. You have to show caring. So whenever a patient visits a, a, any health facility and the person is cared for, Okay? Dignity is shown, empathy is shown. Usually they're happy. And if they take the treatment, most of the times they will feel better. Okay? The image of nursing, one of the things that makes our profession, the nursing profession, to be noble is the attitude. It's the attitude. Wherever you go, people are not talking about the competency. The competency is in all the fields, right? It's not fields. You can be competent, but if you don't have the good manners, the good attitudes, then you are nowhere. And most of the time, we are, even not long ago, one of the nurse was suspected at some point. And it's related to attitude, as I said. Hardly for you to hear that a nurse has a problem because the, the individual is not skillful. Okay? The skill is not the most problem, but the most problem that most of the nurses that they have is the attitude. So, the attitude is very relevant in nursing. And I'm glad that uh, Babu Kapoorbali has um, um, highlighted that point in his book. So, meaning the book is very, very important. Um, I will urge all of you to get a copy of it as soon as possible so that uh, you will read it and then I'm sure you will get benefit from the book. Okay? And then getting the book does not only um, um, does not only let's say the whole getting the book it doesn't mean only for you to have the benefit but also it shows an encouragement okay it's an appreciation it also it will encourage babukar and others to go in for this because if i ask you how many times did you hear a colleague of yours a student writing a book most of you may not be able to tell me so babukar has done something which is very very wonderful okay because writing a book is not an easy process it has a lot of challenges that you have to overcome but with all that Babukar was prepared and he was able to overcome all the challenges. So congratulations to Mr. Kruvare. You've done well. You've done well. So on that note, I want to thank everyone for coming, um, leaving all your busy schedules, and then you come here to give us this occasion. Thank you so much. So, um, Mr. Lamid Banja was uh, is a former student of the Gabriel College School of Nursing and Midwifery. During his stay in the school, he served as the president of SONAMSA, which is the School of Nursing and Midwifery Student Association. He's also the former Secretary General of GAMSA. He's the founder of Maternal and Child Health and Safety Organization. Currently, he is the director of Nairobi Foundation for Mental Health, and he is also a non-communicable disease program officer. As I speak, Mr. Lamin Benja is a fully fresh registered nurse. So join hands and help me welcome Mr. Lamin Benja. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, first, I'll thank you for that uh, introduction. But I'm still in the hands of Mr. Fofana, and 
and his colleague and his colleagues. So I'm yet to <laughs> to pass the process, but surely we'll be there. And thank you very much. Um, I acknowledge the presence of Honorable uh, National Assembly member and of course Mr. Fofana and our colleague here and the Otto Babakar and my fellow colleagues, students and parents, most importantly, for leaving your uh, busy schedules to come and witness um, this great and auspicious occasion. Uh, I can say this is the first, as far as my little knowledge is concerned, this is the first of its kind in the School of Nursing. And to be honest, we've been having series of programs in this school, and especially as uh, Sonamsa, we, we usually um, organize series of programs. Lately, we've started having send off programs or graduation. But I can tell you, this crowd is impressive. And I'm impressed with the work that he did. I believe it, it has been a challenge um, for him, but even though it was overcome. Um, to an extent of having great people with great minds sitting here, to give their words of wisdom to us that are coming up to become something in the future. So it is indeed, um, I am humbled to, to, to definitely stand here and also give a little or a few things to, to you people. Uh, I will go back a little bit. Um, she had said, um, she had, had a, um, asked a question that the three most important people in our lives and the question was answered but there is one person that possesses all the qualities of these three uh, i don't know if there's anyone that can tell me that one person yes a teacher okay uh-huh the mother okay and who else i think um they are very good try um, in my own point of view, I think nurses possess all the three qualities. All the three qualities. Quality of a mother. Um, the quality of a father. And the quality of someone that impacts knowledge in you. Uh, when, when, when you were, um, or when we were first oriented into the school, um, usually Mr. Suarez will come into the hall during the first week. There's something that he will be telling us. Is either Mr. Suarez or one of the senior lecturers. And if you follow very, very well, you will know that nurses are indeed parents. They can serve as mothers. Not only um, at the school here, but at the hospital. Because if a child um, is ill and taken to the hospital, 24 hours around the clock, the child will stay with the mother or the, or the um, significant other and a nurse. Am I right or wrong? Yeah. If a child is at the hospital, they usually, the person that is there continuously, 24 hours around the clock, is a nurse. Understand? And the same nurse will be in the school, in the community, to impact knowledge on other people's lives, or even on, on TV. So meaning we serve um, as, an, um, as a parent, so we have all these three inclusively. But then, which nurse will have all these three qualities? Is the good nurse. Um, you cannot possess all these three qualities when you're not a good nurse. When you're not someone who listens to, um, to people. Because for you to be able to um, take care of someone, you need to listen to them. You need to know 
what their problems are. Uh, even if you cannot solve all the problems, but when you listen to them, you should be able to think critically to be able to help them in any way. So that is why um, I said noses possess all these three qualities. Um, my task here is to, to talk to my fellow nursing students because I'm still a student. Um, like I said, uh, it is not going to be an easy journey. It will only be easy if we want it to be easy. Um, um, Honorable mentioned it here that um, when you are leading, you have to impress um, the people that you are leading. For example, as a, as, um, as a student leader, you should impress the students, not the lecturers. The only place you need to impress the lecturers, that is where the lecturers want you to impress them, that is at the clinical areas and in class. Those are the um, very important places that they will want you people to impress them. So as student knows, that is where everything starts. And you cannot do all that. People have been talking here, and all the speakers have mentioned attitude. People have said attitude, attitude, and attitude. We've been saying it here. They've said it here over and over. Um, if you don't have a good attitude, as a nursing student, if you are not mindful, you will not even graduate. And if you graduate, um, you might frustrate yourself into leaving the field or get yourself suspended out from the field. Because someone who does not um, possess a good attitude will not be able to take care of a patient, will not be able to have the patient or patients to listen to somebody. We are seeing it every day. Okay. Despite all the works that we are doing, every single day, like when you sit with, let's say, a group of people and start talking about nurses, they must tell you the bad attitude of nurses. Despite the fact that all the works that nurses are doing. Um, during public holidays, we, we, we've witnessed, we've, we are just from um, the Eid holiday, which hospital was closed? None of the hospitals were closed. And any time that you go to the hospital, during um, that period, you'll find a nurse there. But despite that hard work, anything that happens in the hospital, 90% of the people will put the blame back to the nurses. Uh, like someone told me just last week that she went to the hospital. He went to the hospital. He told me in Tata Lopta Noto, I know so many tickets were for lack of tickets were for lack. Kato ma ID kato so. So like they believe everyone is a, is a nurse. Imagine this guy telling me in Tata Lopta Noto, I know so many tickets were for lack of tickets were for lack. But uh, we have to make that difference. You are not in the hospital to um, to just sit down there on that desk. When any patient comes, it told him, what's your name? Then Mola Midi, you prescribe. We are taught to, teach, to, to give health education to patients. It is better, it is better for you to treat five patients a day than to treat 100 patients haphazardly. That is what we are prepared, uh, they are preparing us to, uh, to become in the future. And that cannot happen when we do, like, that cannot happen if during um, the time of our studies, we spend every single bit of our time in this dormitory. You are asked to go for work. And, and recently, students are sent as far as Basel to go on clinical areas to prepare students so that when you graduate, when, wherever you are posted, you can work. I will take an example of our class, April 2021. There is nobody in that class who will tell you that I've never gone for provincial postings. So I see no reason why you will be posted to go on provincial postings. And you are telling people that I cannot go there. Or I've spent my entire life in the provinces, I cannot go there. When you as a student, 
when you were sent there, you did not deny to go there. But now you graduate, you don't want to go there. So it is this time that we have been prepared. So let us um, prepare ourselves. Let us prepare our minds um, to be able to work in any environment that we want to, uh, that we are posted into. Um, when I was in SCN, uh, they will tell you if they want to punish noses, they will push you to your bowel. But now every single place in the Gambia, I can say, all the facilities are almost equal. Yorobaol is now having 24 hours electricity supply. So what is the difference? There is no difference. So if the, all those efforts are being made, you come into the school, you only want to walk at Fajikunda Health Center so that when you finish, when, like when you close, you can go to Sarab for your part time. That is not the essence. We have to be sincere. And it, it all starts now, as Northern students. It starts now. So um, let us tighten our belts. Let us be ready for the challenge. It's not going to be an easy journey. As we all know, some of you that are already carrying the, the year two, you've already start experiencing the, as you are going, it's becoming tense. We all know that. So it's not going to be an easy, an easy journey. Already it is not an easy journey. Like, even when you already sit to your final exams, there are still things that are still following you. So you need to prepare for all those things. Um, last but not the least, um, I have an appeal to, to make to the Honorable Member. Um, Sir, so if you can allow me, uh, as you are actually working in one of the, I would say, policy-making institutions of this country, these people you are seeing in front of you are people that are preparing to serve this country, are people that are preparing to welcome um, babies that will be something in the future and those babies are the people you people are busy preparing their future so the work is a circle and i believe if there is anyone that is sick and there is a, there is a session at the national assembly is either you are distracted during the session or probably you will not attend the session uh, series of times We've tried to, as, as, as a student, as a nursing student, we always try to, to meet the National Assembly to actually say our concerns to you people. But um, it was not possible. I know it is not something that I, I am assigned to do, but I have to. Because this is the only platform that I get. You understand? So I have to say it here so you can share with your colleagues. Uh, we've gone to an extent of not having water into our dormitory. Sometimes you will spend the whole one week into the school. People are here. They know. And then it will be very difficult for you to stay in this dormitory considering the, the environment. Considering what we are learning, you don't even have water supply, proper water supply to, to take care of yourself in the morning, to take care of yourself any time of the day. That is one thing. And that is something that um, we've always been wanting. We have a lot of letters on, um, there. Um, ever since, I assume, even before I become president, this has, this has been something that we've been, we've been, we've been trying. So um, we need to give these people a conducive learning environment. Uh, because I understand the council, the Nursing and Midwives Council, they have um, policies that upon graduation, those are things that we need to follow. So you need to learn something before you are actually able to do it. So but you cannot also learn and understand something if you are not 
um, studying in a conducive environment. The lecturers are doing their level best. Sometimes we'll be inside this hall, especially our class. We have two classes combined. There will be no electricity and, you, and the lecturer will remain inside that class. They will teach. Um, even without the, power, the, the, the projectors, they will teach, they will explain to make sure so students understand. So meaning the lecturers are doing their part and students also, we have a responsibility in coming to class. But now, I'm um, sorry, we have to uh, appeal for a conducive environment. Please do consider us. Do consider these no notion students that you are seeing here and their lecturers. Because it is only inside a conducive environment that you can learn and serve better. And it does not only stop here and even in our facilities. Because those facilities are where students are working. Sometimes you'll go on practicals. These lecturers will teach us standard procedures. They will explain standard procedures to us. And you'll go inside the hospital to practice those standard procedures. You will not have those standard equipment there. So it is very, very sad. So we, we, we are trained as nurses to practice standardly. And you go into the field, you will never see certain things. So it's... Um, Sometimes what we read in the books are not what we have. If you go, those senior nurses will tell you, here you improvise, we don't have these kind of things. So you, the policy makers, please do consider us. Um, the annual budget that you people um, have, mostly, mostly, you consider uh, medications, okay, um, allowances and all that. But please, let's consider the learning tools that we, that we also um, will, 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 will be using. But if you only consider the hospital, forgetting that the hospital, the human resource aspect of the hospital is coming somewhere, then it becomes something. It becomes something. And I understand that now this school is entirely private. It's entirely, well, even though students are, every, every application, every, any time that the, um, the portal is open for application, Thousands will apply. Thousands. And within those thousands, only few will be taking. Let's say 50. Or 100. Two classes. But we need um, those learning tools to be available so that we can also learn standard procedures. If you learn standard procedures, you can be able to give back to the community. So these are some of the things that are very, very important. And I, I, I believe... Um, we can, uh, we, can, we can consider them, please. Um, unfortunately, um, I'm saying this here because this is the time that I have, this is the opportunity that I have. Several times we've gone there, but we do not have the opportunity. And it's like uh, we're having some recommendations from the crowd. And this recommendation is coming from someone who has already completed the school. But the, um, the person knows the challenges he has faced and the challenges student nurses have faced and the challenges they are still facing. And um, one of the things um, is transportation. Transportation. Uh, currently, currently, as we speak, the student, the school cannot accommodate even 25% of the students that are enrolled in the school. And I will say 90% of the students that are enrolled in the school, or 95%, are all from within from the combos. Um, normally, or usually, uh, it's not that students don't have money to pay fare and go home. But usually, the times that we close, you, can, you, you barely see a vehicle to even go home. So how do you expect a nursing student who comes to class as early as 8 a.m. and remains in class up to 4 a.m., uh, 4 p.m., sorry, and should go home to Brikama. I'm telling you, some people are all the way from Faraba. Some women, I, re I could recall there's a, there, there was a lady from the conversion class who was having a child, and she has to come here every day and go back home as far as Faraba every day, every single day. So you, you close school 4 a.m., 4 p.m., sorry, and you have to go back home. And 
all of these things can be solved if we engage into serious dialogue. Um, several times we try to have dialogue with the authorities. We cannot, we cannot provide bosses for ourselves. It's not possible. And we are not remaining here. We come, it's a transition. You come here to learn three years and you go and serve. The same people we are going to serve are the same people that put those politicians in those positions. So it will be fair enough um, if you hear our cries. It will be very, very... I know the Gambia College at large needs transportation. But I'm telling you, School of Nursing, we seriously need transportation. I'm not speaking because I'm the president. I've already completed, except if I come back for midway free. But then I'm, I'm telling you, we seriously need transportation. That transportation will ensure even the safety of students. We all know how the country is right now. You close from here. Before you reach home, it's 10 o'clock. Your safety is not, is not guaranteed as a, as a student. So please, um, I know um, I've almost taken all the time, but these are, these are very, very important things. Uh, if I have said anything that actually offended anyone, it is not what I mean to say. And, and I'm very, very sorry for keeping you people here. And I thank you very much. And I thank and pray for uh, Mr. Krubali for this wonderful um, initiative. Because I know it's an initiative that everyone will want to emulate. Like he said, he wants to leave something that people can remember him even in the hereafter. Like when he is no more. So these are some of the things. Anything good that you do will remain forever. It will remain as a legacy. Um, the same thing he does is the same thing that they are doing, Mr. Fofana and the like. They are impacting knowledge on people. And these are things that even if you die, the reward will still follow you. Because you teach me how to insert a cannula for a patient. And a patient, like when I'm walking, patients will be coming on emergency. And those, that cannula can save the life of a patient. I save the life of a patient. I get the reward. You get the reward as a lecturer. So um, it's a chain. So each and every one of us um, has a responsibility to do. The parents are doing their responsibility. That is why they're here today. Every single day they're doing something that they, they, want, they should be doing. So um, let us, let us um, work together and do everything um, together. I am deeply honored and humbled to stand before you today as we celebrate the development of the book as personal, known as personal and healthcare safety for nursing students. And personal safety is not only for nursing students. Okay, um, what I mean here in context is that uh, a book is not only literally uh, limiting for the nursing students, it's also limiting outside the nursing students. Means people working in different places, like uh, Honorable Babakar said, uh, Honorable Mr. Babakar Bailey, as he said here, he's going to board, I don't know, seven books, something like that. Had he been that it limits only here, he wouldn't have bought the book, but the quality and the importance of the book leads him to that, you know, that health, safety is everything. If we are not seeing as nursing students, then who would be sick? If people who are sick at the hospital, they presented with illness, why do you yourself you are sick? You are not safe, sorry. Do you think that there will be anyone who is safe? No, there will be no one who is safe. So it reads, and this book contains three chapters, and where they will discuss that is, you as a nursing student, your responsibility as a nursing student, you, the book also have a chapter that uh, discusses about hospital as a book of knowledge. Yes, as we go for practicals, sometimes uh, we said that we normally do the theoretical aspect here and we need to go for the practical aspect at the hospitals. So, hospital as a form of knowledge, how are we going to achieve or how are we going to gain that? It's through learning in the hospital. Just as for the students who go to the hospital, you, uh, you hide or you run away from the clinicians, that will not happen. 
So what it was the hospital as a place of safety knowledge. And my attitude as a nursing student, this moment is not just about the culmination of what what is journey, but a collective celebration of the power of literature to inspire, educate, and trans uh, transform lives. First and foremost, I want to express my heartfelt gratitude to Mr. Babakan Kurubari for pouring his passion, quality, and countless hours in crafting this masterpiece. As we know, the Ireland school here is not easy. Every Tuesday, we normally have this. But due to that, it doesn't stop Babakan from having another aim different from just committing to be an Arab student. As he wrote the book, it's for sale for everyone who is here, who is outside here, and the uh, country at large, the nation, or the world at large. Because safety is the one, the first priority in nurses advocates. So, um, I also want to express my appreciation to my honorable class teacher, Mr. Popana, for his uh, unwavering effort that you know, he has done for the uh, entire class, and the effort that he made for Mr. Babakan to come out wonderful book. And it be that it was not his effort also, but by my time very difficult to come out with this book because there were really other um, cases that you know he normally miss, but uh, due to the um, greatness of Mr. Popana, he will try to conduct a special uh, classes for the test for Babuka. I think you can give this uh, Yes, Mr. Popana, thank you for that and for your wonderful book. And also, uh, I thank be to the editors and the designers and publishers and everyone else who play a important role or part of bringing this wonderful program. And uh, I will then show that it's just not a book, but it's a work of art and it's also uh, an inspiration and a protective book for the time. So uh, the book, the true book like this was we discovered new worlds, but then the new world discourse of the book, what I simply mean is that uh, they, are, they are segmented, they are segmented into uh, limited, limited, uh, they are segmented into limited uh, chapters, I mean, chapters. So in that chapters, the book, as we know, will help to save us from uh, everything that you know. Hospital like hospital affect infections, you know. The safety mostly, but uh, the most uh, priority that you know why we try to save ourselves mostly is this hospital affect infections. And if you read the book, that's the safety it will reflect for you. Okay, thank you. And um, this book contains conversations, thought, and inspired imagination in all who have the privilege of turning its pages. In closing, let us raise a toast to Mr. Babakar Kulbari for this timeless magic of literature. May this continue to enrich our lives and entire generation to come. Thank you, and for your wonderful time. Mom. Yeah, when my mom speaks more, like tears will start fall out. But like I'm telling you, I'm hard. I'm not soft. Anyway, yeah. That... Okay, before concluding, like I will tell you the reasons why I always listen to motivational videos. Or write them in class because some of my classmates say like I'm a motiva motivator because like I'm sent to school uh, with no hope I was a kid like my tongue my tongue was heavy in my mouth to speak is a problem I was sent to maybe they say like once they say like most of the people who send their like their kids to Dara for Quran memorization like when they feel like this guy cannot do well in English school that's the only time because they say maybe Quran will change this guy I was sent to a Dara uh, with a great name, Mama. Yeah, people call him my wife. And I guess he's the only wife I've got for now. <laughs> Mama believe in me. Mama is my source of, you know, everything. He's the one that will normally conduct study classes for us with the kids in New York. Normally he will separate me because my tongue was heavy in my mouth. Like, to speak is a problem. People can attest to that. I find it difficult. But... Due to his encouragement and like pushing me hard, Alhamdulillah, I believe God is the source of all work. He believed in me, said like, I'm going to send Babaka to school. 
And my mom said, like, teachers are going to beat Babuka. Like, the tongue is not clear. I can recall that. The first day, like, after, in the process of launching my book, I visit Mama. Mama told me, did you show the book to your mom? I told me, yeah. She said, what did your mom say? She said, I told my mom was crying. I said, yeah. But I'll never forget you, Ma. And Baba, I can recall. Baba always say, Mama, yeah, yeah, ha, Babuka. Because anything you want, you, anything Babuka wants, you will give it to Babuka. I can recall that fully. So Baba is gone, and may Allah grant Tim Jana an only depart soul. Yeah, they are, they are my source of strength throughout childhood time. Yeah, I can attest to that. I believe without those supports and others, I may not be here today. Yeah, and my stepmom, anyway, people do call him my grandma. Yeah, my stepmom always said, like, I'm mouthy, like, I like saying big things. That I know my father even cannot achieve. Because, yeah, I normally promise my grandma, like, he normally say, like, this, they call him Nono, he normally say Nono and others. So I'm having these hands at home. I normally, you know, take some money and, you know, steal some money and do certain things. Yeah, but like, my, my stepmom, like, is always there for me. Yeah, I can recall that even my brothers want to beat me up. My stepmom will show up. Yeah. And special thanks to you. She's not around, but anyway, I guess the message will reach today. Special thanks to you, stepmom. And brothers and sisters, more especially, my two sisters, Meda and Fatu Krubali. Yeah, I can recall last time I was sick, I went to the hospital and my sister was crying. I told him, like, I'm not dead yet. I'm alive, I'm just sick. It's so emotional. Thank you so much for all your efforts. I can pay you and my aunties, uncles, for your unwavering support throughout this journey. I came to understand truly I'm in Africa in the process of launching my book. You know why? Because any guy I like visit or meet, they will tell you like, I'm busy boy. You are in first year. Just go and do your exam and move on. After graduating, you can launch their book. But I always get this in my like, after my father passed off, like, I always got in this, like, this in my like, every moment, like, from now, we can all go. Because my dad was farming. He lived the farm day. After farming, like, maybe two, two months before harvesting, my dad passed off. If I, dad, if, I, if I told my dad knew that, like, he would not benefit from that farming. So he will not do it. He will not do it. Are you seeing? So I always said, like, that dream in me, if I don't bring it into this world, like, it's going to be crazy. Maybe I will be gone soon or not. So, like, I believe as a youth, my fellow youths, bring out your dreams into this world, no matter what. Yeah. I normally say to, I normally say to my friend, like, Mohammed Jallo, Mad settings. It's my high school classmate. Yeah. Although, like, it's hard to say, Mohamed Jalla pushed me a lot. Yeah. This is my source of motivation through high school. Mohamed Jalla will tell me, like, Babuka, you're not going to sleep here without finishing, like, this chapter and other stuff. Alhamdulillah, Mohamed Jalla is an A student, and he graduated with ninth grade, five days. But unfortunately, due to determination and other stuff, she left. She said, like, in this country, there is no support for us. Our leaders are not considering us. Like, we have to go outside and struggle to make it in this world. May Allah help him along the way. Yeah. They are all great guys in my life. I can attest to that. College life, I promise myself, like, we either die young or we live forever. That is, that is our motto, Muhammad Muhammad Jalla. We're going to die young or live forever. When we die young, possibly, maybe, in general, we can continue with our struggles or enjoyment inshallah so all of you i would like to thank you all those who believe in me sending here today special and more thanks to you special more thanks to you before these two days before this event i was just living for four hours you know why i said like it's the first time maybe if i go there my tongue may even stick i will not be able to speak or like i may be blowing their grammars but i said like if my dream is not scary then it's not a big dream if i don't make mistake then i'm not progressing yeah I believe this, like, every setback is a setup for a greater comeback. I believe so. So my fellow brothers, my fellow brothers, never give up on your dream, no matter how hard the road is. Yeah, I know. Through the process of writing this book, I feel like, I feel like truly I'm in Africa. Because the people, I think, like, they're going to support me most. You know, they let me down. Trust me. But thank God, Honorable Man, I just met uh, him around the uh, hospital gate. After explaining, he said, like, boy, I'm going to be there for you. Trust me. And thank you for that, for your that growth mindset.
and Mr. Fofana also like, I'll be following Mr. Fofana like from down to dust, just to force to go through the book and write forward about the book. If I thought Mr. Fofana was somebody else, you tell me what, Babuka, focus on your education and move on and got good transcript or certificate. But Mr. Fofana encouraged me throughout this journey. Yeah. I can tell you this, the whole world is willing to support you verbally, but not physically. Only a few people are there to support you physically. I'm telling you this, bro. I can say like, in the process of launching my book, people are saying, Babuka, you did well. Babuka, you did well. Tapping me on my back. But none of them, most of them, don't show up. Trust me, they don't show up. They tell me like, maybe this boy is trying to make money or something else. But I believe in myself, as I say to my fellow boys, like, one day, I don't know when, but I'm going to stand in front of thousands of people and give a speech about the struggle. They told me, like, people went more struggle than you do. Like, some people, they are, all their family members are dead, but they are silent, they are present with it, they are moving. I tell them, yes, but for me, I want to speak it out. I want to say it to them. Yeah. Yeah, I, I want them to learn from that point. Yeah, because I know without the support of Mama, Baba, and others, I may not be in English school today. Yeah, I can attest to that. Special thanks to them. And special thanks to the entire family and all the people here. And my brothers, Musa, Barako, Keba. May Allah guide them along the way and all the youths struggling to make it in this life. 